we now enter the final segment of reading 66 where we will talk about forward rates the relationship with spot rates the relationship with the yield curve and finally how we can use spot rates to value a bond the first thing to understand is the interpretation of forward rates so when we talk about forward rates we essentially are talking about rates of either borrowing or lending at some date in the future so just to understand this let's say that you are sitting here at period zero and you know that you will need to borrow some money at the end of this first period so at point one and you will need to borrow money for one period so if you go to your bank and say that let's say each period is six months so if you go to the bank and say that i will need to borrow money after one period or after six months and i will need to borrow that money for a period of six months then essentially what the bank will quote you is a forward rate so for you this will be the cost or the rate for borrowing money at some point in the future so this is the point in the future so as you can see when we talk about forward rates we need to specify how long the borrowing or the lending will be for and when the borrowing slash lending will begin in this particular example the borrowing is for one period and it happens after one period let's take a slightly more complex example let's say that you need to borrow for one period and you are going to borrow after two periods and the way this is written is as follows so this rate let's say this rate is six percent where if you borrow for one period after two periods the rate is six percent the way this is written is as follows you put an f for the forward rate you put a one over here before the f to indicate that you are borrowing for one period and you put a two over here which implies that you will be borrowing after two periods so if you see the notation 2f12 what does this mean this means that you are borrowing for two periods so let's say that if this is time zero two means that you are borrowing for two periods and the loan will begin after 12 periods so at the 12 period mark so if each period is six months that means you are borrowing after six years and you are borrowing for two periods which essentially is one year so that's what 2f12 means you need to be clear about the interpretation of forward rates and you also need to understand this notation remember that what we write first is the duration of the borrowing slash lending and the second item here is when does the borrowing or lending begin now let's talk about the relation between the relationship between spot rates and forward rates and to keep things simple i'm going to talk in terms of annual periods as we discussed before spot rates represent the rate that you would expect if there are no cash flows taking place in between so what let's say that we write the three year spot rate three year spot rate means that you put your money in for a three year period then what is the annualized rate that you are getting so let's say that if s3 is 10 percent so s3 is equal to 10 percent that means that if you put your money in at time zero over a three year period you will get a 10 percent return how do we relate spot rates now to forward rates so we've already talked about spot rates now let's look at the forward rates for these three periods so the the spot the forward rate for this period is the same as the one year spot rate so the one year spot rate can be written as s1 this can also be written as a forward rate where we say that the forward rate for one period starting zero periods for now from now what about this one this can be written as the forward rate for one period starting one period from now now being time zero 
and for this third region we can again write the one period spot rate starting two periods from now the link between s3 and these three forward rates is as follows so the idea being that if you invest dollar one at the spot rate or if you invest dollar one at this forward rate and then take out money here and then invest it at this forward rate and then invest at this forward rate you should end up with the same money at the end of year three so if you invest one dollar and lock it in at the three year spot rate what will you have at the end of three years you will have one plus s3 remember s3 is the rate for three years but expressed as a annualized number so at the end of three years you should have one plus s3 to the power of three now this should equal the amount of money that you have if you put it in first at this forward rate then this forward rate then this forward rate so this should be equal to one plus one f zero into one plus one f one into one plus one f two so this is the relationship that ties together the spot rate to the forward rate now if we are to just bring this down to the actual spot rate essentially what we then say is one plus s three so we can take the cube root of this is equal to the cube root of this whole expression so i'll just write it down again 1 plus 1 f 0 into 1 plus 1 f 1 into 1 plus 1 f 2 so notice that the spot rate is essentially the geometric mean of the three forward rates and this means that given so how many variables do we have here one two three four so given four variables if we if we are given three out of these four we can find the fourth so if we know the spot rate and we know these two forward rates we can find this forward rate and similarly out of these four variables if there is one unknown we can easily figure out that unknown so a relatively straightforward concept in this clip i'm not doing any examples but obviously either in the curriculum or from your study notes you can pick up some examples and you must actually uh, do a few examples to really understand this concept but at a high level what you need to know is presented right here now let's talk about the relationship between yield spot rates and forward rates here is here is something that you might see so let's say x axis represents time or maturities y axis represents uh, rate if you have a forward rate curve that is going up this means that our short term interest rates in the future are expected to go up if forward rates are going up then you would expect the spot rate curve to be also upward sloping because if rates in the future are going up then the spot rates the one year spot rate two year spot rate etc will also be going up and if spot rates are going up then you would expect the upward moving spot rates to also pull up the yields and essentially what we are seeing here is forward rates pull up the spot rate curve which in turn pull pulls up the yield curve and uh, a popular exam question might be that if forward rates are going up or forward rate curve is upward sloping then what would you expect uh, uh, with the spot rate curve the answer is you would expect spot rate curve to also be moving up and then what would you expect uh, is happening to the yield curve you would also expect the yield curve to move up if the if the forward rates are flat then the spot rate will also be flat and the yield curve will also be flat and if the the final scenario is if the forward rates are coming down then the spot rates will also be coming down and the yields will also be coming down there are a few good examples in the curriculum that are based on this concept i don't think most uh, study notes cover this very well but uh, it is important 
Finally, how do we value a bond with forward rates? The idea is very simple. As you've, uh, as you've seen in the previous slides, with forward rates, what you can do is derive spot rates. So from forward rates, you can come up with spot rates. And then as we've seen before, once you have your cash flows on a given bond, all you need to do is take those cash flows and discount them back using the spot rate curves. So, so that's how you can value a bond using forward rates. So as a quick summary, from forward rates, you calculate the spot rates and from spot rates, you can calculate the present value of the various cash flows and that in turn will give you the value of the bond. So that is it. This was a very long reading and lots of concepts. That's why I broke it up into several segments. Make sure you understand this content very well because it is the foundation of fixed income securities and make sure you practice a lot. If you have any comments, please post them. And if you have, uh, if you like this video, please click on the like button. That is it.